Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to another episode of Pep's Corner. Today, we will continue reading our book, The Westing Game. We will read from chapters five through six. Our focus and purpose for reading is posted on the screen. So make sure you have your book in hand and are actively following along and reading. Remember, boys and girls, to reread a second time. Remember, there's a lot of characters. So let's begin. Remember to come to shared reading fully prepared. Chapter five, page 22. 16 heirs. The marble sky lay heavy on the gray, great lake when Grace Windsor Wexler parked her car in the Westing driveway and strode up the walk ahead of her daughters. Her husband had refused to come, but no matter, recalling family gossip about a rich uncle, maybe it was a great uncle. Anyway, his name was Sam. Grace had convinced herself that she was the rightful heir. Jake was Jewish, so he could not possibly be related to Samuel W. Westing. I can't imagine what became of my silver cross, she said, fingering the gold link necklace under her mink stole as she paused to praise the big house. You know, Angela, we could have the wedding right here. Turtle. Where are you wandering off to now? The letter said, never mind. Turtle preferred not to explain how she knew the library could be entered from the French doors on the lawn. The front door was opened by Crow. Although the Sunset Towers cleaning woman always wore black, here it reminded Grace Windsor Wexler to dab her eyes with a lace handkerchief. This was a house of mourning. The silent crow helped Angela with her coat and nodded approval of her blue velvet dress with the white collar and cuffs. I'll keep my furs with me, Grace said. She did not want to be taken for one of the poor relatives. She seems rather chilly in here. Turtle too complained of the chill, but her mother tugged off her coat to reveal a fluffy, roughly pink party dress, two sizes too large and four inches too long. It was one of Angela's hand-me-downs. Please sit anywhere, the lawyer said without glancing from the envelopes he was sorting at the head of the long library table. Mrs. Wexler took the chair to his right and motioned to her favorite. Angela sat down next to her mother removed a Tussaud towel from her large tapestry shoulder bag and took up embroidering. The monogram D slumped in the third chair. Turtle pretended she had never seen this paneled library with its bare and dusty shelves. Suddenly, she sat up with a start. An open coffin draped in bunting rested on a raised platform at the far corner of the room. In it lay the dead man, looking exactly as she had found him except now he was dressed in the costume of Uncle Sam, including the tall hat. Between the waxy hands folded across his chest lay her mother's silver cross. Grace Wexler was too busy greeting the next heir to notice. Why, Dr. D, I had no idea you'd be here, but of course, you'll soon be a member of the family. Come sit next to your bride-to-be. Turtle, you have to move down. D. Denton Deer, always in a hurry, brushed a quick kiss on Angela's cheek. He was still wearing his hospital whites. I didn't know this was a pajama party, Turtle said, relinquishing her chin, uh, relinquishing her chair and stomping to the far end of the table. The next heir, short and round, entered timidly, her lips pressed together in an ampish smile that curved up to see what was to curved up to see what must be pointed ears under the straight cut steely hair. Hello, Mrs. Baumbach, Angela said. I don't think you've met my fiance, Denton Deer. You're a lucky man, Mr. Deer, Dr. Deer. Mrs. Wexler corrected her, puzzled by the dressmaker's presence. Yes, of course, I'm sorry. Sensing that she was unwelcome at this end of the room, Flora Baumbach walked off. Hi, mind if I sit next to you? I promise not to pull your braid. That's okay. Turtle was hunched over the table, her small chin resting on her crossed arms, 
From there, she could see everything except the coffin. Grace Wexler dismissed the next air with an audible tongue click. That distasteful little man didn't even have the sense to remove his silly aviator's cap. Tisk. And what in heaven's name is he doing here? The delivery boy shouted. Let's give a cheer. Otis Amber is here. Turtle laughed. Floor bombed back tithered. And Grace Winter Wexler again clicked her tongue. Tisk. Doug Hu and his father entered silently, but Sandy gave a hearty high and a cheery wave. He wore his doorman's uniform, but unlike Otis Amber, carried his hat in his hand. Grace Windsor Wexler was no longer surprised at the odd assortment of heirs. Household workers, all, or former employees, she decided. The rich always reward servants in their wills. And her uncle Sam was, as, was a generous man. Aren't your parents coming? She asked the older Theodorakis boy as he wheeled his brother into the library. They weren't invited, Theo replied. It's uh, uh, Chris announced. What did he say? He said it's snowing. Theo and Flora Baumbach explained at the same time. The heirs watched helplessly as the invalid's thin frame was suddenly torn and twisted by convulsions. Only the dressmaker rushed to his side. I know, I know, she simpered. You were trying to tell us about the itsy bitsy snowflakes. Theo moved her away. My brother is not an infant and he's not retarded. So please, no more baby talk. Blinking away tears, Flora Bombat returned to her seat. The infill smile still painted on her pained face. Some stared at the afflicted child with morbid fascination, but most turned away. They didn't want to see. Pyramidal tact invol involvement, Denton Deer whispered, trying to impress Angela with his diagnosis. Angela, her face a mirror to the boy's suffering, grabbed her tapestry bag and hurried out of the room. Well, hello, Judge Ford. Proud of her liberalism, Grace Windsor Wexler stood and leaned over the table to shake the black woman's hand. She must be here in some legal capacity, or maybe her mother was a household maid. But of one thing, Grace was certain. J.J. Ford could no more be related to Samuel W. Weston than Mr. Who. Can't we get started? Mr. Who asked, hoping to get back in time to watch a football game on television. I must return to my restaurant, he announced loudly. Sunday is our busy day but we are still accepting reservations. Shin Hu's restaurant on the fifth floor of Sunset Tower specializing in, Doug tugged at his father's sleeve. Not here, dad, not in front of the dead. What dead? Mr. Hu had not noticed the open coffin. Now he did, oh. The lawyer explained that several heirs had not arrived, had not yet arrived. My wife is not coming, Mr. Hu's great said Mr. Who. Grace said Dr. Wexler was called away by an emergency operation, an emergency Packers game in Green Bay. Turtle, conf <laughs> Turtle confided to Flora Bombat, who scrunched up her shoulders and turned behind a plump hand. Then we are still waiting for one or two more, the lawyer said, fumbling with his papers, his hands shaking under the strict scrutiny of the judge. J, uh, Judge Ford had recognized E.J. Plum. Several months ago, he had argued before her court, bumbling to the point of incompetence. Why, she wondered, was a young and experienced attorney chosen to handle an estate of such importance? Come to think of it, what was she doing here? Curious Curiosity, perhaps. But what about the rest of them? The other tenants of Sunset Towers don't anticipate Josie Joe wait for Sam Westing to make the first move. Light footsteps were heard in the hall. It was An only Angela who blushed and hugging her tapestry bag close to her body returned to her seat. The heirs waited. Some chatted with neighbors. Some looked up at the gilt ceiling. Some studied the pattern of the oriental rug. J.J. Ford, sorry, Judge Ford stared at the table at Theodore Rackus's hand, a callous hand, a heeled cut, and shiny flash of a burn on the deep bronze skin. She lowered her hands to her lap. His Greek skin was darker than her black skin. 
thump, 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 someone was coming, or were there two or three of them? In came Crow, eyes lowered without a word. She sat down next to Otis Amber. A dark cloud passed from her face as she eased off a tight shoe under the table. Thump, 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 the last expected air arrived. Hello, everybody. Sorry I'm late. I haven't quite adjusted to this. Sadell Pulaski waved a gaily painted crutch in the air, tottered and sat down quickly with another thump. This crutch, crutch, what a horrible word, but I guess I'll have to get used to it. She pursed her bright red mouth, painted to a fullness beyond the narrow line of her lips, trying to suppress a smile of triumph. Everyone was staring. She knew they would notice. What happened, Pulaski? Otis Amber asked. Did you pull Turtle's braid again? More likely, she visited Wexler, the foot butcher, Sandy suggested. Sidel was pleased to hear someone come to her defense with a loud click of the tongue. She had not even blinked a false eyelash at those offensive marks. Poise, they call it. It's really nothing, she reported bravely. Just some sort of wasting disease. But pity me not, I shall live out my remaining time, enjoying each precious day to the full. Thump, thump, thump. The secretary kept to the side of the room, avoiding the oriental rug that might cushion the thump of her purple striped clutch. As she made her way to the end of the table, her exaggerated hips were even more exaggerated by the wavy stripes of white on her purple dress. Purple waves, Turtle thought. Denton Deer almost fell out of his chair, leaning back to follow this most unusual case. This she favored her left leg, then her right. What is this? whispered Mrs. Wexler. The intern did not have the least notion, but he had to say something. Traveling psoriatic mitosis, he pronounced quickly and glanced at Angela. Her eyes remained on her embroidery. The lawyer stood, documents in hand, and cleared his throat several times. Grace Windsor Wexler, her chin tilted in the regal pose of an heiress, gave him her full attention. One minute, please. Sadell Pulaski propped her purple and white striped clutch against the table, then removed the short pad and pencil from her handbag. Thank you for waiting. You may begin.